morning, everyone. Welcome to worship on this rainy Sunday. Well, after much fretting and stressing and moving around, we finally realized that we're not able to do the Zoom meeting today because it's the problem is with Zoom. We don't know if Google is messing around with them or what, but the thing that I've feared the most has finally happened, and that is we we're unable technologically to get things together. So here we are. We're recording still, and uh, this video will be available to watch pre-recorded. So we don't get to have a live interaction, but we still will have a service. Blessings to all of you, and uh, grace and peace. May the peace of Christ rule in our hearts this day. We begin today, as we normally do, by remembering baptism. which is hymn number 880. Oh, God. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. as we see ourselves 
in relation, indisposable relation, essential relation, help us to see one another, help us to see all beings as belonging to us and we to them, change our imagination so that we may see and feel and live lives of shared being, one with another. For we are one body, one body, though many members. Indisposable to one another. And may we be a blessing. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees nor knows the spirit. You know the spirit because the spirit abides with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in the Father, and the Father, you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, those who love me will keep my word and my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words and the word that you hear is not mine but is from the father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you but the advocate the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. The Gospel of the Lord. The scripture as a whole and the scripture today in particular. Give us a different way of seeing ourselves in the world, ourselves in relation to God, ourselves in relation to Christ, ourselves in relation to one another, in a way that is quite different from the way we ordinarily see things and think of ourselves. It promotes a point of view that I'm going to call this morning interbeing. We all have a sense, an imagination around our own being. And we've been shaped and formed by our culture, our extraordinarily individualistic culture, 
to think of ourselves as isolated, independent beings, and we're encouraged to be independent. This is of great value in Western culture, and in American culture in particular, to be an individual, to be self-sufficient, to be independent. And that's fine to a point, except that at the root, it's untrue, it's false. We, none of us, are truly independent. We, none of us, are truly self-sufficient. Even the strongest, even the people who drop off the grid and go to live lives of isolation, even they. No, we share the same essential DNA. We share the same ancestors. We share the same air. We share the same water. We share the same earth. We share the same being. We share the same creator. And so rather than independent being, we live lives of interdependent being. And it seems to me that right here, right now, in this time, in this special time, in this time of pandemic, that truth might get into us a bit more. That truth of interdependence instead of independence. That truth of shared being or interbeing. Because we see now that our lives do depend on one another. And what one person does or does not do impacts the lives of every other. Whether that action or inaction is out of loving concern for our shared being, or disregard for our shared being. Both have consequences for all. There is a kind of compassion that's rooted in a sense of independence, and we're called to move beyond that. And the kind of compassion, and it's not a bad thing, but if it's rooted in independence, then compassion works like this. I, out of concern for you, do something for you, share with you, show you some kind of tenderness or kindness or help. And that makes me feel good. And that's fine. That's a good thing. But if we learn to love our neighbor as ourself, if we learn that when we love our neighbor, we are loving ourself, when we realize that our neighbor is part of self, then it becomes different. It comes out of a vision that we are in this vitally together. Jesus encouraged us to love our neighbor as ourself. The Apostle Paul encouraged us saying that we are part of the same body. Not independent parts, but part of the same body. Though our mem we are different members, and therefore a hand cannot say to a foot, I have no need of you. Or the eye cannot say to the cheek, I have no need of you. We all belong to the same body.
A Lakota elder out in South Dakota invited a, a writer from Bemidji to come and to write down his story. It got published in a book that's a wonderful book called Neither Wolf Nor Dog. But in there, he speaks of religion. And he says to Kent, who is the author, he says, you people, Kent is white. He says to him, when your missionaries came, when your Christian missionaries came to us originally and started to speak to us about having Jesus in the heart, having Jesus in our hearts, we understood that. That made sense to us. When they spoke to us about the indwelling spirit of Jesus, of Christ, we understood that. That made sense to us. For this is the way that we honor all of our great ancestors. We hold them in our hearts. We emulate them in our lives. And so we honor them. And they live in us. And we in them. And they are present and alive among us. So when you talked about Jesus this way, we understood that. But what we couldn't understand is why you didn't talk about anyone else that way. You didn't talk about your great ancestors also in the same way, using the same language of them living in our heart. He said, take for example, Abraham Lincoln, who I believe was your greatest president. Abraham Lincoln. Now, when you teach in your schools, you teach about Abraham Lincoln, you teach facts. You say, he was born here, and he got elected here, and then he did this, and then he did that. But the great thing that he did, the great thing he did for the world was he emancipated the slaves. So why, he asked Kent, why Kent? Do not your people teach Abraham Lincoln and say he was the great emancipator of oppressed people. He is our father. We are all children of Abraham Lincoln. And why don't you teach the children to hold Abraham Lincoln in their heart and to do what he did, to honor him and to make him alive in your heart? by also being an emancipator of oppressed people. And then he said, you see, your religion has a problem because you think of Jesus in a way of magic you don't think of Jesus as your greatest ancestor among other ancestors. No, you think of Jesus as magic. And you can live however you want to live, and you can always have Jesus magically in your heart because you believe this or you believe that, or because you say a prayer. No. It's not magic. Jesus lives in your heart. You are children of the Father. And Jesus is in the Father. And the Father is in Jesus. And Jesus is in you. And you are in Jesus, just as this passage says. When you honor him with your whole being, when his way becomes your way, when his teaching becomes realized in you, this is the power of spirit. This is when you share being with the creator 
and with the Christ, with all the great ancestors, and with one another. This is what spirit means. This is what Holy Spirit means. It makes us a body. It makes us belong one to another. It's not magic. It is quite natural. It is, as Jesus says, the spirit of truth. It is truth. Very concrete, very practical, not magic at all. It is very human and natural and divine grace. Let us sing hymn number 865. Charlie, are you out there? Will you come sing with me? That would help. Then when I lose, when I lose my place, you can carry me. Yeah, you can write right here. Right here. I have it open. 865. Praise my soul, the God of heaven, to his feet your tribute bring, ransom. mercy, the very mercy by which we have life and breath and have our being. Trusting in that mercy and the very life that we share. Let us pray for one another, for our world, for all those who are in distress. Gracious God, heal the world. 
Heal the world by healing us. May we share your spirit. May we have the spirit of Christ. And that sense of shared being, where none of us can dismiss another, where no nation dismisses another, where no people dismisses another, is not essential to all of our being. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, heal the world. Heal the world by healing us. Make us healers. Make us people who realize that our being depends on all others. Help us to love one another and loving as we love ourselves. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for healers. We pray for those who are in hospitals, in ambulances, those who are providing for those in need who are risking their safety and health. We pray that you would sustain them and that the rest of us would be helpers to them. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the air, the water, for all of nature, for the natural world, the beautiful natural world, infused with the divine, we pray that we would become caretakers and not just dominators, that we would become caretakers and not just users. Heal us of our exploitive tendencies. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for a world of equality. We pray that you would heal us Heal our inequities, our lack of care for others. Heal us of our own over-individual view of ourselves. Heal our society of its callousness toward those who go without or have less. Lord, in your mercy. Heal the people in our lives who are sick. Heal those of us who are sick in body or mind or spirit. We think of them now and we hold them together. We hold them in the light. Lord, in your mercy, Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, indeed all of us, trusting in your grace and mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace in spirit with one another. send my thanks out to others who have been helping and supporting with their energies and with their time to make our Thursdays work, to make these services work. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Mira. Thank you, Ron, who will probably be with us next week. Thank you, Arne. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Phoebe, so many to thank. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. And thank you for all who've been sending in gifts of money. People who are part of the congregation, people who are not part of the congregation, uh, blessing us and our ministries so that we can be healers in this place, healers in this part of the world as we recognize our shared being 
with all of our neighbors. Thank you. Let us pray together the prayer God taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Before we have our final hymn, um, <laughs> before we have our final hymn, um, a couple announcements. Um, just want to remind us all that on Wednesday nights at 5 o'clock, Walt Witzke is leading us in uh, a tour of the Bible called Wrestling with the Bible. Uh, please join us by Zoom if Zoom is working by then. Um, secondly, uh, we are going to have a live stream concert. Uh, Arts on La Fond is sponsoring, and Arts on La Fond is, is a partner, a, a vital partner with uh, Zion Lutheran Church and um, a few others in the neighborhood to enhance the experience of artists and local art here in the Midway neighborhood. We're going to have a live streaming concert uh, Friday from noon to one, and it will be Eric, Brandt, and family. Uh, so join us if you can. Um, Eric, many of you know as uh, the principal, the lead singer um, of the Urban Hillbilly Quartet, and also the Bloodwashed Band. So. He's going to be joined by his children, and they're going to make some fun music. And um, So join us at noon, and that will be on YouTube Live. We will be sending out inf a link for people to receive, to be able to uh, participate in that. Receive the benediction. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May God's countenance be lifted up upon you, giving you peace. Amen. Hymn number 881. <laughs> Thank you. 
Let us go in peace to serve one another and our God. Amen.